special good morning to you today, Mike. Hey, Shannon, good morning to you all down in uh, Houston and across the planet. Just wanted to say uh, thanks for the song. That was by the band Rush, and uh, my friends uh, Ken Fisher and Greg Shirt sent that up for me. And Rush was really inspired by uh, the launch of STS-1, so they included that in their music, and it was really inspirational for them for the whole for the whole album. But what was really cool about it is that is that space shuttle program has really inspired everybody uh, across our planet uh, for such a long time. So this uh, song was a tribute to the space shuttle program, and uh, so we'd like to say good morning. Pilot Greg uh, Johnson calling down that uh, the crew is ready to get started with a uh, docked late inspection, ready to uh, perform its last uh, major task as a member of the uh, space shuttle STS-134 mission. It uh, will be delivered over to the International Space Station and become a permanent component of the ISS during the fourth of the spacewalks, the fourth and final spacewalk planned during Endeavour's mission. This is Gerhard Daum with the German Space Agency and Space Expo Association. Question for Box. You are the prime operator of the SMRMS. What was your most challenging robotics task and what was it like working at the robotics station in the cupola with that view to Earth? Well, Gerhard, uh, I'll tell you what. Um, the cupola was everything that I uh, had heard from other people times 10. It's in a magnificent view. Uh, you have a view of literally half of the space station uh, operating from the cupola. Um, some of the robotic ops that we did on uh, EVA-2 uh, didn't even need any cameras. You could just look out the window. Um, a lot of the uh, robotics op robotic ops that we're doing on this mission are located on the other side of the station. Um, for example, when we installed AMS and ELC-3, so the advantage of the cupola uh, wasn't apparent as far as looking out the window, but just as a place to be, as a place to operate the robotic arm, it was a wonderful, and it is a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Mike Fink, on Friday, uh, you guys are going to go over 1,000 hours in EVA time during assembly of uh, ISS, or more than 40 days, which is either an, incredibly, an incredible milestone or, or maybe it's just a trivial milestone. I don't know. How do you look at that 1,000 hours of EVA time? Thanks. Yeah, 1,000 hours, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, in fact, we had concerns when we were first designing the space station of how much time EVA, uh, zero-G EVA time uh, it would take. Up at that point, we weren't really as experienced with, uh, with EVA. The shuttle program paved the way uh, with some of the earlier EVAs, getting our extravehicular mobility unit, EMU, up and running, and, uh, and then uh, getting it to really shine. Uh, some of the tools and uh, techniques that came along for space station building are very helpful. Uh, the, the stints that we did at Hubble Space Telescope, uh, we still use some of those tools to this day for the space station. So we've really come a long way with uh, space walking. We've learned a lot from our Russian partners and they've learned a lot from us. And uh, the new suits that we have and uh, their capabilities uh, allow us to do uh, longer spacewalks. I don't think anybody uh, 10, 20, 30 years ago would imagine that we would uh, have so many eight hour spacewalks even like the one we had uh, just this week. I wanted to ask uh, Mark Kelly about uh, the upcoming uh, atmospheric reentry and, and, and landing. This is going to be a night landing, and I, I think it might be your first night landing. And I'm wondering uh, what you think the challenges uh, are going to be, and uh, if you could kind of give us an idea of what do you think it will be like. Thanks. Well, the biggest challenge is it's going to be dark. You know, that's, uh, um, you know, night landings, uh, the fact that you don't have a horizon out the window could be a little bit more of a challenge, but these are mostly instrument approaches. I mean, they really are. I mean, we fly the equivalent of what uh, an ILS would be in an airplane. It's a much steeper glide slope, about 20 degrees instead of about two or three degrees. So, but we fly the approach exactly the same. We have some 
uh, very bright lights on the runway. So once you get down below about 100 or 50 feet, it's almost like daytime there when you get, get very close to the ground. Uh, I've got a lot of night landings uh, uh, over, I think, about 100 on an aircraft carrier. Those are challenging, too, so I've kind of been in this position before. Uh, I'm ready for it and look forward to it.